Hi everybody, NeuroGal here, welcome back. For those of you who are new to my channel, I am a neurologist, a physician who specializes in the brain. And so my purpose with this channel is to teach those who are interested in learning more about the brain from a neurological standpoint so that they can use that information and hopefully improve their lives. So today on that note, I am going to respond to a request to talk about the mind-gut connection. Now, I'm gonna make a few videos about the mind-gut connection just because it's a, it's a very extensive topic and a lot of research is going into it now, um, but this will be my first video of a series. This whole gut-brain connection theme was inspired by one of my subscribers who requested this topic to be discussed by me, and so I thank you very much. You know who you are. Just a little background about the gut and how it's connected to the brain. Science has discovered that the gut actually has a nervous system of its own. In other words, we have two brains, the one up here and the one in our gut. And the brain down here can influence what is going on up here. As embryos, the gut and the brain are derived from the same stem cells. So this probably has something to do with how connected they are. The gut can communicate with the brain and in turn affect people's moods, people's behaviors, and people's overall health. The gut communicates with the brain through two major mechanisms. The first mechanism is through a nerve called the vagus nerve. Now, the vagus nerve sends and receives input from the gut and it travels up to the brain and gives signals to the brain about what's going on in the gut. Now it can also send signals from the brain to the gut. The second mechanism by which the gut can communicate with the brain is through chemicals that are released by gut cells. These chemicals are released into the bloodstream and interact with brain receptors, which results in changes in mood and behavior. There are billions of bacteria that live in our gut and they secrete chemicals that can influence our mood and behavior as well. So this is called the microbiome of the gut. The bacteria of the microbiome can secrete different chemicals, some of which are neurotransmitters. These chemicals are released into the bloodstream and interact with brain receptors, which results in changes in mood and behavior. That being said, the food that we eat determines what our microbiome is made out of. The food that we eat determines what bacteria grow and thrive in the gut. And that bacteria determines what chemicals are released into the bloodstream and interact with brain receptors. Therefore, the food that we eat can affect our mood and behavior. Let's look at an example, fermented foods. You may have heard that they're good for you, but how? Fermented foods like sauerkraut and kombucha and yogurt contain a very high amount of bacteria called lactobacillus and bifidobacteria. These bacteria have the synthetic machinery to produce a certain neurotransmitter called GABA. GABA is the major inhibitory neurotransmitter of the nervous system and can lead to diminished emotions. So it can decrease anxiety. A major medicine class called the benzodiazepine medications act on the GABA receptors. And benzodiazepines are GABA agonists, which means that they act as GABA. And therefore, when someone takes a benzodiazepine, they feel more relaxed and less anxious. Foods that are fermented contain bacteria that produce GABA. Increases in GABA can dampen negative emotional responses like anxiety. Is it possible that eating fermented foods can increase GABA production and thereby be used to treat anxiety? Multiple studies performed in mice show that feeding mice lactobacillus results in decreased anxiety-like behavior. There are also human studies that show that the bacteria found in fermented foods can result in decreased anxiety. 
In one study, experimenters divided 36 women into three different groups. The first group of women were given yogurt that contained lactobacillus and three other bacterial strains that are commonly used to turn milk into yogurt. They did this for four weeks. The second group of women received a yogurt type product that actually had none of that bacteria in it. And then the third group of women received no milk product at all. At the end of the study, each woman underwent an MRI scan of her brain. While each woman was in the MRI scanner, she would have to complete a, a task which involved looking at a variety of different people's facial expressions. The study found that the women who consumed the probiotic yogurt had a dampened response in the emotional centers of the brain. This is the first of the few videos that I'll be making on the gut-brain connection. Um, stay tuned for a few more within the next few weeks. I hope you have a wonderful day. Please like this video, please leave comments, please subscribe to my channel, and please be sure to visit my website, neurogal.com, and subscribe to my newsletter. I uh, put out regular content on my website. Thanks for watching, we'll catch you next time.